Thanks, Dr. Bredesen. And up next, we have Alex. Alex, if you can go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Thank you, Thank you doctor, for an incredible presentation. Really uh, appreciate your professionalism and um, your um, succinctness. Doc, what, what's an average daily diet intake like for you? Just, just everyday foods that you eat every day. I'm sure you eat more for function than anything else. What's an average <laughs> Yeah, th I mean, thanks for asking. Um, definitely, I'm not the one to ask. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn to do as well as my daughters and my wife. They all do much better than I do. Um, and certainly a great person to follow is, is in, this, uh, in the last book and also one of the seven survivors uh, named Julie G. She has a wonderful website that's called apoe4.info and she talks about her own, she's an apoe4.4, her own problems, her own story, her own turnaround. Uh, but in general, I try to do something very similar. Again, I'm trying to be more like Julie G and my wife and my daughters, uh, but I try to use the, the KetoFlex 12-3 approach, um, typically 12 to 16 hours of fasting. Uh, and um, I'm actually on my fast from last night uh, and I try to do uh, a plant rich, not completely. I try to do some fish, try to do some uh, grass fed beef and some pastured chicken. Um, I do um, eat pastured eggs. Um, I'm rec I recognize the issue with the TMAO, but I also, when I checked, I, I, I checked with Chronometer, which I find very helpful, you know, a free app, wonderful thing to check. And I found out that no question, my choline intake is too low. Um, and so I try to get some pastured eggs um, and get in fish and things like that. And you can get choline obviously from liver and other things. Um, and then uh, try to typically eat two meals a day, lots of salads, um, and again, I think the previous speaker uh, you know, uh, really uh, knows a tremendous amount uh, about appropriate dietary intake. But again, I'm focused on the biochemistry and neurochemistry. What can we do to help your synapses? And it does turn out that those, that's the combination. You want the phytonutrients. You know, there's work, a lot of work just on polyphenols alone as one of many phytonutrients that are very helpful. There's a lot of work published on the Mediterranean diet and the mind diet. But we have found that getting into some degree of ketosis um, tends to be helpful, especially for people who have any symptoms whatsoever or for people who are trying to improve their normal cognition. Uh, so you know, that's the, overall, that's, that's, the kind of, uh, that's the kind of diet that, uh, we, that we are all trying to use. Does that answer your question? Uh, I, we're actually, uh, they're gone, but yes, I... Okay. Surely think it did. Thank you so much, doctor. And uh, up next, we have Nan. Uh, Nan, if you can go ahead and unmute yourself for Dr. Dale Bredesen. Hi, Dr. Bredesen. Thank you so much for this wonderful lecture. Um, my question is probably very simplistic, but I would really like to know your advice on the easiest or the most practical detox program. Yeah, this is a great question. Um, probably the easiest. Now, let me just say that there depends a little bit on whether you're trying to detox from chemotoxins or biotoxins. There are some differences there, but in both cases, you want to do the basics. And, and, and I, I, re, I wrote about that in, in the last book, The End of Alzheimer's Program. We have all sorts of guides on this, et cetera. But uh, you know, you, in general, and then I, and I should add, for chemotoxins, a great book by Dr. Joe Pizzorno uh, called The Toxin Solution. I really, I like that book. I think it's a good one for anyone to read. Um, and then for biotoxins, I mentioned Neil Nathan's book. And then also uh, uh, Dr. Shoemaker uh, has a book on this uh, with, uh, um, uh, with a mold about water damage, the life in the era of water, of, of, uh, of dangerous buildings. So both of those are uh, excellent. But remember that it's a combination of taking in fewer toxins and getting rid of more toxins. And so we will, for the, for the, on the getting rid of side, you know, we want to think about we're doing this with our urine, obviously with elimination, we're doing this with sweating, we're doing this through breathing. Um, and so, you know, you want to combine that filtered water, very helpful, um, sweating, very helpful, sauna, especially uh, infrared sauna, whether you like far red or near, uh, near infrared, uh, far infrared is what most people use, but you know, very, very helpful there to do that. And then follow that up with a, a shower with uh, you know Castile soap or with one of the non-toxic soaps. And there are, again, whole protocols to get ready to do that uh, that have been used uh, very successfully by functional medicine physicians. 
Um, and then high fiber diets, and then, you know, detox all the crucifers, very helpful. Um, you know, things like Brussels sprouts, very helpful. And then sulforaphanes, broccoli sprouts, very helpful. Some people like to grow their own broccoli sprouts. Sulforaphanes, very, very helpful uh, in these. And then of course, reducing your intake, uh, you know, or, uh, organic. And if, you, if you're not gonna do organic, at least look at the, uh, at least look at the dirty dozen and the clean 15. I noticed there was a comment about, uh, about um, uh, you know, beef, uh, you know, this is, Again, I'm agnostic. I understand there are lots of issues, uh, and my, my wife has been very, uh, very involved with this. Uh, many people feel it's inappropriate to eat any animal at any time. I totally understand that. Other people feel that uh, you know I'm going to eat fish and I'm going to eat uh, pastured chicken and, and I'm going to eat some grass-fed beef because I think it helps my cognition. So uh, you know I am agnostic again about these things. I recognize the issues, and I think everyone has to make decisions for themselves. But please recognize that so much of what we're being exposed to is remarkably toxic. I had no idea about this even even through my training as a neurologist. You know I grew up in a world where we're all you know eating things high in sugar, all eating things processed foods, just be, without realizing how horrible this is for so many of us. Um, so I think that these are some of the basic things we can all do for detox. And it does help, again, absolutely helps get your probiotics and prebiotics. Um, I have to say, I've noticed clear differences re reading things from uh, my friend and colleague, Stephen Gundry, who's written about this, um, just noticing changes in yourself that you can clearly notice are associated with improving your detox status and improving your gut status and things like, wow, yeah, I didn't realize how bad things were for my whole life um, until I did the right things. So I think these are things we can all do to improve our lives and improve our longevity and improve our, our likelihood of living very long without these complex chronic illnesses. These really are turning out to be diseases. I think in the long run, these are gonna be labeled as 20th century illnesses. And my, my hope is that by the end of the 21st century, these will all be rare diseases. Thank you, doctor. And uh, up next, um, and I, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, I'm sorry if I'm not, it's uh, uh, Sanjita or Sangita. Go ahead and unmute. Oh, you have unmuted yourself. Thank you. Uh, um, uh, thank you for excellent, excellent talk. I have been following you and, and I totally, totally admire you. You are truly cute. Set up like a one classic. I'm just going to take general advice how we can bring your program to the facilities like the bigger corporations like Life Care Centers of America or the Genesis Corporation, something like that, because I truly feel that they can be greatly benefited. And then my one special question is about one of my three B patient who we are seeing like little cognitive. Uh, uh, can you hear me? No, you're breaking up you're on and off. I'm hearing little bits and pieces here, but what could you repeat the question? Uh, uh, sure. So the first question is how we bring your protocol to the uh, long-term care bigger corporations. So that is my first question. Yeah. Well, let, let me address the first and one. And then my other so let question. Let me address the first one if I could. Um, so if I may, let me just address the first one. So yes, we're, we're interested in getting this, the word out. We're getting it to long-term care. Where is, so the easiest way uh, is through RALNA, I think. This is uh, 14,000 different uh, residential assisted living groups. Uh, my hope is that that's a place to start. But I think also there are advantages for people who are just beginning a new one, because that's why you don't have to convince people who are already there to get on it. But yes, I hope that there will be help. And I also hope we can bring this ultimately to groups that will offer uh, dementia insurance, because there hasn't been any such thing in the past. We really need to have this to get people evaluated early. 